Hello, everybody. This is Alan Fine. I'm here with Paul Gallagher, who's the Visit Britain Executive Vice President of America's Australia and New Zealand, which is a new role that takes two breaths to say. And we're going to talk about it as well as Destination Britain, North America. We're here in San Francisco, and this is Insider Travel Report. Paul, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. So, so let's talk about your role before and your role now Sure. the differences and how does it make you feel? <laughs> yeah, no, the title's um, re reflective of the new role, which is looking after the USA, Canada, Brazil, Australia and New Zealand. Um, and also I've been doing that since December last year. And that's where um, Gavin Landry, who's become our, um, uh, our global international director, and then I've taken over from him. And yeah, so it's been great because Gavin and I worked together for six years. So, you know, we ran, we ran the region together. So and what did you do before? Before that, I was the deputy director of the Americas, so, and yeah. You just added a few countries. And then I just, you know, they added, you know, they gave me a few more extra countries. And um, yeah, I was born in England, but I grew up in Australia, so it was great for me to get, get the Australia region as well. And that was more because we've got so much synergy because, you know, between Australia and the US and Canada. So it just made sense from a marketing point of view and to have, to have them bring bring them into um, our region. So you, do you have two business cards for the whole title or can it fit on one? <laughs> <laughs> it can just fit on one, but very small print. Okay. <laughs> so let, now let's talk about what uh, what is your goal for your regions? So I'm so proud of our region because the US is our number one on spend and value, you know, spend and, and volume. And then Canada has been doing so well. So Canada is now number nine and now, so it's now top 10. Australia is number four. So I've got, I've got three countries in the top 10. So, I'm so when you meet with the, your peers, you know, you've got America. <laughs> <laughs> well, America, the US is always, yeah. I think every, everybody wants the US, everyone wants America. But um, I love Brazil as well. And Brazil, you know, down in the, in the region down there. And Virgin Atlantic is about to, to start flying um, as well uh, from Brazil to back oh, to, the, right, right. Yeah, to the UK, which is great. So they'll be doing Sao Paulo, London. Um, yeah, so it's um, so I think it's great. We've got some really strong countries in a, in, the, in the patch, and for the US, it's like you know we've got all you know it's not just um, we're sitting here in San Francisco and California is actually our number one state, which a lot of people are surprised about. But um, it's the it's California and New York. So it's California as the number one, and then New York as number two. There's always a bit of friendly rivalry, and if you combine like with New York, you can have New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Then that tri-state area, then that is, then they are really number one. That's where, yeah. But also growing is Texas and Florida. Absolutely, Texas. Yeah, Texas is, and I think that's been interesting. Post-pandemic, lots of people have been moving. We've always been big in Texas, but it's that's growing. Florida as well. So I think a lot more people are moving around the country, and so that's why it's helping grow those states as well. Um, Illinois, so you know, Chicago is always um, popular, and that, and that that region. So so now. So your campaign, fake Brit till you make it, is hard for the Texans. <laughs> that draw. So how do they do that? I, I don't think it's easy. Yeah, we'd have to we'd have to test it out on some Texans, wouldn't we, and see how well they can do their Scottish accent or their um, Welsh accent. But that was having a little bit of fun because I think people don't realise again that we've got three nations. We've got the we've got the Welsh, we've got the Scottish, we've got the English, and there is so much fun with all the the various um, dialects, the the language, the slang, and so we were having a bit of fun with that and saying, okay, you you know, practice your Scottish accent, practice your your Welsh accent, and. Um, um, yeah. Uh, did you want to talk about the demographics that are coming in? I think that one of the key things for us is we want to try and get more younger people as well. We're trying to get, you know, really attract people because we've got a lot of people that love Britain, have been to Britain many times. We've got those repeat travellers, but we really want to get the people from say 25 to 35 to come to Britain to come experience London. And of course, we don't like everything. We don't want people just to come to London. We love people coming to London, but we want them to also go further afield. And you know, I was just hearing the day how going to Cardiff now, it's only going to take an hour and a half by train to get from London to Cardiff. So you can actually be in another country right. in 90 minutes. Right. And I think people don't realize how easy it is on trains right. just to get around the country right. and, and a lot quickly, a lot more quicker. So you, you have some campaigns that you want to talk about? There's a co-op one? Yep, our co-op campaign's been really successful. So that's where we've been working with the industry. Um, so we've had key partners, you know, 
people like um, Hilton Hotels have, have come in, come on board, and that's been really good to help drive bookings, getting getting a sort of the commercial partners to join up with us and to really drive drive bookings. So that's been a great, you know, the co-op campaigns have been really successful for us. And we're going to, that was a test sort of pilot, so we're going to do that again next year and, um, yeah, and grow that and grow that even further. I talked with your chairman briefly about inclusivity, but I know that you're working very hard on it. Absolutely, yeah. For us, um, and that can mean many things, but we've we've got an actual um, LGBTQ plus campaign, and that's called Great Love. And again, we've always wanted to show that we're a safe, friendly, welcoming destination, and that's all year round. A lot of people think about Pride festivals or Pride Month in June, but we actually want people to come all year round, and we just want people to feel safe and welcome. And it's, and you know, whether that's a Pride festival or going to see a West End show, just going to see going going to the destinations, experiencing festivals like the Edinburgh Festival and Fringe. You know, there's a lot to offer the LGBTQIA traveller all year round. So we're, it's, it's, a, it's a big thing for us. And then we're looking at, but we're looking at all sorts of travellers. You know, we want to be, um, we were hearing a lot about, um, there's a, the company Wheels of the World that we were hearing about today, the disability. Yeah, so there's just a lot where we think we want everyone to feel inclusive. We, you know, whether it doesn't matter whether you're a solo traveller, whether you're, you know, we're travelling with friends, family, um, whether you've got, um, you know, what, whatever, everyone is welcome. We're going out to 124,000 travel advisors. What's your advice to them on how to sell Britain? I think travel advisors are, travel advisors are crucial, absolutely crucial to Britain. Uh, we really value you, and I think the big thing for for us is to, to really is to get people outside of London. We want people to go to London and explore more of London. Don't just stay in the in Zone One. Get further out. Go into Zone Two, Three, Four, Five, Six. Really see the villages of London. But then once you've done that, we really need the travel advisors to help people understand how easy it is to get around the rest of the country. And whether that's going by train, whether it is flying and going up, flying up to Edinburgh, but you can catch a train up to so Edinburgh. Done that, yes. Yeah, so I think knowing the, the ease of train travel is going to help a lot of, you know, if you can help there. Um, and really just promoting all of the country and knowing that they it's so vast it's it's the country itself is not big but we've got such vast experiences between scotland wales and england and i think that and seeing that di- those differences and the and as we chatted about you know with those regional dialects and just you, know, you can just um spend so much time in britain and get so many varied experiences how much fun is it to to put these things all together huh okay thank you for talking to us. all right thank you and this is alan fine for insider travel report